So I made a list <laughs> of the top three things most people are afraid of. And I want you guys to decide later on for yourself if I'm right or wrong, okay? So let's start. At the third place, I have dying. At the second place, I have sickness. And in the first place, this is something I found to be what we all are afraid of. And I mean literally everybody's afraid of. Can you guys guess what it is? I see some people guessing. <laughs> because it seems to be low prices. <laughs> now, let me tell you. The reason why I believe that we are so scared of low prices is because we immediately start assuming that there must be something wrong with the product if the <laughs> price feels too low. Am I right? Okay. So for the people that think that I'm not right, I want to give you this next example. Okay? So let's say you're walking on the street, and you see a sign that says, delicious coffee for just five cents. Just five cents. I guess your first thought's going to be, I wonder why it's so cheap. And then, out of suddenly, this next film pop up in your head. <laughs> now I guess, your answer is going to be, hell no. <laughs> but you know what? It could have been the best coffee ever. Not that one on the film, but the one that costs five cents. It could have been the best coffee ever, but you will never find out. Because you got scared of something as silly as a low price. And you know what the funny thing is? Even poor people are afraid of low prices. Can you imagine that? You would think they would get used to it by now, but they don't. <laughs> the only thing is they don't have another option. So their answer is gonna look something more like this. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, let's give this coffee a try. <laughs> now I guess you're laughing is because, or you know I'm right, or you can at least relate to this feeling we have about cheap products. But nowadays, who can blame us? Because it seems the only way to design a cheap product is by making it less desirable, taking away all the fun and all the goodness of the product. And as a product designer, I completely disagree to this approach. And I want to tell you why. Therefore, let me take you back to my island, Curacao. Hey, some people. I'm riding in the car, enjoying the island, and out of suddenly, I hear people laughing. Out of suddenly, I hear the sound of a good salsa music and the smell of grilled meat on a barbecue just reach me. So let's put it together. People laughing. Good music, and also barbecue, that can only mean one thing. Somebody is having a party, and I have to find out how I can get in. <laughs> so when I came there, I saw people building a house. So a family was building his own home, and he invited a few family, friends, and neighbors by organizing this fun barbecue, and everybody came and helped to build that house. How impressive. 
How impressive. So by cutting out all the professional help, that saved them a lot of money. Meanwhile, they were having a lot of fun. And then it made me realize, hey, in order for us to make a product cheaper, it's not necessarily that we have to take away all the fun and all the goodness of the product. All we have to do, what I mean all we have to do, is just change the identity. So by using free labor, these people have changed the building process into something more fun and more cheap. And this way they have changed the identity of their own home and also the way the house look. Because I'm gonna be honest with you guys. Okay, I, you guys laughing is because you know what's coming. <laughs> the bricks they use weren't really meant to be used without the proper building skills. So the end result was a house that I know for sure none of you would like to live in these houses unless you didn't have any other option. But the idea was good. And I liked it. So all I did, I took the idea and I made it beautiful. By designing a few smart bricks that have a very unique form, which allows them to be fit together like a very easy puzzle without the use of cement, machinery, or any professional help whatsoever. So this way, people can come together for a drink, grill a steak on a barbecue, have a lot of fun, and still be able to build a house that looks as beautiful as this one in just five days or less, without even getting dirty. So I can do it in this style. <laughs> so do you see what I'm talking about? It is possible for us to design cheap products that are desired. Because this way, all I wanted to reach is that people can build their own home in this way, having barbecue, having fun. It is possible. That's why I want to take you to the next example in my life. Because since I've discovered this philosophy, it changed my life completely in everything that I do. So in this next example, I want to take you back in the time I was working as a bus driver. I promise you, all I wanted to do, and I'm being very sincere, all I wanted to do is I just wanted to change the bus that we know to be something very grumpy, gray, and boring into something more cozier, fun, and great. That's all. I just wanted to make it more desired. Because a lot of you take the bus every day. But which one of you really, really likes to take the bus? You cannot wait for the bus to come. You cannot wait. Is that a clapping of no, I'm not that one. I'm not that guy. Because that's the feeling I had. That a lot of people don't really like to take the bus. And you know one thing? The identity of the bus compared to a car is already so different that it allows the bus to be a lot cheaper than the car. And that's the sharing factor. But still, none of us really like to take the bus unless we didn't have any other option. So I took matters in my own app. I went, got myself a portable stereo so I can play some DJ. I'm not a good singer, but I can play some good music. <laughs> and I also went and got myself a portable disco light. <laughs> so at night, I will shut down all the lights, put a disco light on, play some good solo music that touches your soul, and together with my smile <laughs> and my sense of humor, I would create a whole different atmosphere in the bus. All for just one purpose. So
so people can have a moment of entertainment, a moment of relaxation after a busy day. So when people get out of the bus, they would get out with a smile on their faces. So now, suddenly the bus became something, a place where people call each other and say, hey, what are you doing tonight? I, I don't have any plans. Man, let's meet in the bus. <laughs> let's go chill in the bus with that guy. It's so funny. <laughs> but you know the rest of the story. <laughs> OK. Because at the end, my philosophy to change the bus into something more desired became the reason why I got fired. <laughs> Because obviously my philosophy didn't match the philosophy of the bus company, which was, the bus ride should just be cheap and safe, my friend. <laughs> and I was like, what's the whole point of making something cheap and safe that nobody desires? <laughs> so, just like you can see, I don't care. If they fire me, I don't care. If investors reject my ideas, I know what I want to do. I want to change cheap products, make them so great that we will not even call them cheap products anymore. We will call them the best for less. Because when you hear people say poverty sucks, what they really mean is cheap product sucks. <laughs> Am I right or not? Okay. But I know, I know, my philosophy is not going to work in a business role. Okay? I've realized that. Because in the business role, with their marketing strategies, <laughs> the word desire means money. If a product is desired by a lot of people, it will be overpriced, even if it was very cheap to make. That's why I had to change my business plan into a charity. Because business is all about making money. Charity is all about doing good. A good, I feel, that I must do, so we no longer have to be afraid of low prices. Because in the deep of my heart, I know that we can change the way we design cheap products. We can change their identity. We can provide poor people with products that are fun, that are good, that are desirable. So this way we can change the whole way we experience poverty. So don't misunderstand me. And I'm begging you, don't misunderstand me. Poverty is a man-made thing. And I'm not saying that I'm going to fix it or solve it. But you can be damn sure that I'm going to make poverty beautiful.